Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare is one of the best shooters ever made. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably spent a large majority of your time growing up playing the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, or the Wii. And if you fall into that category, I'd say at least 50% of you, while looking for cheap games that your parents wouldn't have a heart attack at the sight of, stumbled across this. Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare. And in my opinion, this game is more fun than most games released today. And yes, I know that old thing good, new thing bad has been said one zillion times on this website, but I genuinely think that this game is different. But why? What makes this game special? How is it any different to other games that release around the same time? And what is it like today? Well, over the past month or so, I've been doing countless experiments, research, and most of all, waiting for the servers to be fixed, and I think I've finally figured it out. This is Garden Warfare, the best game nobody plays anymore. On May 5th, 2009, PopCap Games released a game called Plants vs Zombies. The premise of the game was pretty simple. It was a tower defense game where you had to defend your house from incoming waves of zombies by planting plants. Each plant had different abilities to help fend off the zombies, such as the pea shooter shooting peas, the sunflower getting you more sun so you can get more plants, and the walnut that kind of just sits there. Additionally, there were some extra modes such as Zen Garden, Puzzle Mode, Survival Mode, and of course, Walnut Bowling. Because of all this content and how addictive and easy to understand the gameplay was, this game got really popular. But while it originally only released on PC, in 2011, it was released on mobile, and it absolutely skyrocketed its popularity. It's as if it was made for phones, and it could be played anywhere without any internet connection necessary. Because of the huge popularity the game had gotten, PopCap quickly began working on a sequel called Plants vs Zombies, which was similar to the original game, but expanded on all of its original ideas, with new zombies, new plants, new areas, and improvements to the core features of the game. But, like every game company ever, an idea was looming above them, like a hawk or a flying zombie. And that was a spin-off game. Now, as you probably know already, spin-off games go one of two ways. They either suck or really suck. But it's okay, there are still some good ideas they could come up with. They could make like a 3D version of the original game, that could be fun. Or maybe some sort of plants versus plants game where you can fight other people online. Whatever it is, I'm sure they'll play it safe. What? It's not like they're gonna make a plants versus zombies shooter game. They made a plants versus zombies shooter game. At E3 2013, PopCap announced plants versus zombies garden warfare and the crowd went crazy. While the initial E3 announcement is the most depressing thing I've ever seen. This multiplayer action title, it won't just tickle your funny bone, it'll chew the whole damn thing off. <sighs> People were actually pretty excited for this game. For example, Akil said, This was the best game of EA's show. If you think otherwise, bring it. Which is a bit threatening, Akil. Calm down. And over the next few months, PopCap continued to release more info about the game, with new trailers, behind the scenes footage, and gameplay. With the main marketing gimmick being that we're not like other shooters. We're quirky and weird. We're crazy. You can't take us anywhere. Which, for the intended audience of children, worked really well. And on the 25th of February, 2014, it was released on Xbox and slowly released on everything else on like random days over the coming months, which was in retrospect. Very weird. But eventually it was fully released and it was out. But was it good? Well, if you've read the title of the video, it kind of spoils it, but uh, yeah, it's actually really good. Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare is a third person hero shooter where you can either play as plants or zombies. Each team has four selectable characters that each have completely different fighting styles, along with three unique abilities. Starting with the plants, you've got the pea shooter. This is the character that everyone chooses first. It's as default as you can get. He shoots high damage single shot peas that are effective at long range, but works best at medium range. His first ability is the chili bean bomb. It's a grenade, basically. You throw it, 
and after a few seconds it explodes. His next ability is P Gatling, where you dig yourself into the ground and basically become a stationary turret. You can then shoot faster automatic rounds at the trade-off of less damage. Additionally, you'll become a target for every single zombie in the game and get blown up in seconds. His final ability is called Drugs, where you get a temporary speed boost and can jump insanely high. The great thing about the Peashooter is that, while he's very simple to play and great for newcomers, he also has a really high skill ceiling, especially because of a certain feature that I'll talk about later, A tier. The next plant is the Sunflower, which is basically the healing character. But rather than being entirely support based, she's actually really powerful offensively. Her main attack is an automatic rifle that she shoots out of her face that deals a decent amount of damage, but her abilities make her stand out. Her first ability is the Hero Shooter Heal Beam. You know, the thing that's in every single class-based video game? Yeah, that's, that's the ability. Her second ability is Sunbeam, where you dig into the ground and become Homelander. And her final ability is the Heal Flower, which allows you to plant a flower that provides healing to you and your teammates anywhere on the map. The Sunflower isn't my favorite character, but if you don't have at least one on your team, you're not gonna go very far. Beta. The next character is the Chomper, which is the big guy. Additionally, this is the only melee character in the game. You attack people by biting them, or you can go full on spy and attack people from behind to get a not so instant instant kill. His first ability is purple goo. If you cover someone in your goo, shut up, they get slowed down massively, which makes them much easier to kill. His second ability is burrow, where you dig under the ground and can chomp zombies from below. His last ability is spike weed, which is a camouflage trap that will damage and grab any zombies that accidentally walk into it. Personally, this is my least favorite character. Having to get up so close to every single person you want to kill can be really difficult when there's more than like two of them. Eater. The final plant is the cactus, and this is the sniper, kinda. Not, not really, but it's like the closest character to a sniper. The cactus shoots single shot high damage spikes that are most effective at long range. However, spamming this will cause your accuracy to lessen over time. Her first ability is potato mine, which is pretty much just a landmine. You put it down and if a zombie walks over it, they get blown up. Her second ability is garlic drone, which is probably one of the most powerful single abilities in the game. By using it, you gain control of a flying drone that you can use to not only shoot people with, but launch full-on airstrikes on people too. But it has really low health, so you gotta really focus on your positioning. And finally, she has Tallnut Battlement, where she puts down a walnut wall that can be used to protect you from incoming fire. Overall, I think that the cactus is probably my favorite plant, because while it's not as consistently powerful as the pea shooter, I feel like it's a lot more fun at least for me. S tier. Now, onto the zombies. Also known as everyone's favourite, let's be honest. It's, it's everyone's favourite, okay? We don't need to lie. They're cooler, alright? First up, there's the foot soldier. And, okay, you know when I said that the pea shooter was as default as you could get? I lied. This guy is. This is the Jonesy of this game. His primary attack is gun. Shoot gun, bullets kill. His first ability is Yes. It's a grenade that both creates a smoke cloud that lowers visibility and damages plants that stay in it. His second ability is Rocket Jump, which is probably the most useful ability in the game. It gives you an absolutely huge boost into the air that allows you to get pretty much wherever you want on the map, which is very useful when there are like no invisible barriers anywhere. Yes, you heard me. I'm going to talk about it later. His third ability is ZPG, which is a rocket launcher. You charge up a rocket that does an unbelievable amount of damage, which is both incredibly satisfying to land and the equivalent of a FNAF jump scare if you're playing as a plant. The Foot Soldier is, without a doubt, the best character in the game, and probably is the most fun to play, but it's also the sweatiest character in the game, so he goes in S and F tier. Next up is the Engineer, no, not, not that one, that's, that's the wrong guy, yep, yeah, no, that's him. Yeah, good job. The engineer is equipped with a gun that shoots concrete projectiles that explode on impact. Jesus, where was his creativity with the foot soldier? His first ability is Sonic Grenade, where he throws a megaphone that stuns anybody in its explosion radius, including burrowing chompers. His next ability is the Zombot Drone, and by using it, you gain control of a flying drone that can be used to not only shoot people with, but launch full-on airstrikes on people too. Hang on, I've said this before. And his last ability is the Jackhammer, which increases your 
your movement speed massively and shows off your ass a bit more. But additionally, the engineer can also set up teleporters at certain points in the maps, along with defense sentries around it. This alone makes the engineer really powerful for the team. And he's also just really fun. A tier. Next, there's the scientist. His main weapon is a goo blaster that's only really effective at close range. It's basically a shotgun. His sticky explodey ball ability is a sticky grenade. It's kind of boring, to be honest. But next, he's got a straight up tracer blink ability. After charging for a second, you teleport forward in a straight line, which is both useful for mobility and sneaking behind opponents. And finally, he's got the zombie heal station, which heals any zombies within its radius. Being the only real healer zombie, this character is nowhere near as strong as the sunflower, in my opinion, at least when it comes to supporting your team. But he's still fun, don't get me wrong, so he goes in C tier. And finally, the last character in Garden Warfare is the All-Star. This is the big guy. Again. He's equipped with a straight-up mini-gun and has the most health of any character in the game. His first ability is Exploding Baby. He boots a newborn at the enemies and the fucker detonates. His next ability is Sprint Tackle, where he charges forward, both dealing damage to and knocking back anyone in its path. And lastly, he has the Dummy Shield, which is a shield that you can put down. Now while this character sounds extremely overpowered, in practice he isn't amazing, but he can still be powerful if you have competent teammates. B tier. And that is every character in the game. Uh, Jack, there's actually another character in the game. Oh, really? What? What? Why haven't I seen it in any of my matches? Uh, you, you probably just missed it, um, but apparently if you don't mention it, someone posts your full address in the comments, so... Okay, uh, how do you even know that I've not made the video yet. He left. Okay, great. The other character is boss mode. And listen, I love this game, all right? It's, it's really good, and I've got loads of stuff to say about what makes it so good in a second, but this mode is ass. The idea of being able to control multiplayer matches like you're playing the original game is a really cool idea, but this just sucks so bad. It's so boring. You wait so long to do anything and they don't even give you like a live view of the game. You just get PNGs. This looks like it was made on scratch. Don't believe me? It is. Okay, so now I've gone over all of the base characters in the game, but what if I told you that there was even more to these characters. In fact, what if I told you that every single character in the game has seven additional variants that completely change how they play? Well, I would be lying, some of them have eight. These variants both completely change how the characters look and also change their primary attack. Now, it would take way too long to go through all of these, so I'll just give you a few examples. You've got the Plasma P, which changes your regular single shot to a charge shot that does even more damage. There's the Citrus Cactus, which changes your single shot attack to a burst shot attack. You've got the Electrician variant for the Engineer, which gives him a gun that shoots electricity that can chain across multiple plants. And of course, you've got Chester Chomper and Dr. Chester. You know, from the... Cheetos collab. This huge amount of variety with the characters adds so much replay value to the game. Because not only are you able to unlock new characters to try, every fight you get into will play slightly differently because of them. And just when you think they can't possibly do any more options for gameplay customization, every single ability in the game has a variant. You've got stuff like the Dark Flower for the Sunflower, which instead of healing your teammates, shoots red lasers at your enemies. There's the Multi Rocket for the Foot Soldier, which shoots four mini rockets instead of one big one. And of course, you've got all the cheesy abilities, you know, for the Cheetos collab. All of these features mean that if a Count Trompula comes up to you, you don't know if they're going to cover you in purple goo, yellow goo, or I'm not saying it. Okay, now all this is great and all, but the game doesn't just revolve around the characters. Games rely on what you can actually do in the game, which brings me on to the next topic, the gambling. No, sorry, um, I mean, uh, the, the game modes, yeah. The game modes. The game consists of two major game modes, Garden Ops and Multiplayer. In Garden Ops, you and up to three other friends play as plants in a co-op tower defense mode. You start by choosing one of eight maps, which each have their own distinct look and theme. Once you're in game, you start by choosing one of three gardens around the map as your base, and then you get some prep time to put down plants you've collected through gambling, which will help you defeat the incoming waves of zombies. There's a set amount of zombies that spawn each wave, and they can range from being regular brown coat zombies 
zombies to special zombies and sometimes even character zombies. After you've gotten through four waves of zombies, you're presented with more gambling. Jesus Christ, these developers had a problem. Where the game will decide what three random bosses you'll have to face in the next wave. If you're lucky, you can instead get some in-game currency. But if you're unlucky, you'll get a super boss wave. Where stronger themed zombies will come and attack you. Along with three of the same boss. My favourite is the Yeti because... They run around like a massive baby. After defeating all 10 waves, which includes a second boss spin, you have to go across the map to reach the extraction point and wait for Crazy Dave to pick you up in his battle bus. Completing this mode will give you in-game currency and the amount will vary depending on which difficulty setting you choose at the start. Ranging from somewhat challenging to genuinely impossible. How does anyone beat this game on crazy mode? Seriously, it is Impossible. I feel like a toddler playing this mode. Multiplayer, on the other hand, is like Overwatch, but good. There are multiple game modes you can play, such as Team Vanquish, which is basically Team Deathmatch, Suburbanation, where your team has to gain control over three control points to win, and the main multiplayer mode, Gardens and Graveyards. The main premise of this mode is pretty simple. The plants team have to defend a series of gardens across the map, and the zombies team have to capture them. But the twist is, depending on the map you get, the final objective will be completely unique. For example, the final objective on the Walnut Hills map is for five zombies to get inside Crazy Dave's mansion. But to get there, they have to make their way up a huge slope while deadly walnuts roll down it. God, nobody's ever going to take me seriously. On Main Street, the zombies have to plant four bombs to blow up the tactical cuke. On Driftwood Shores, the zombies have to assassinate Big Sunflower. And on Cactus Canyon, you have to push the payload from Team Fortress 2. These map-specific objectives mean that different characters are going to be more powerful depending on the map. This game thrives off its ability to be chaotic, but still involve a lot of strategy, and that's shown through these maps. So, you're probably sitting there thinking, wow, this game seems perfect, and it pretty much is. The characters are fun, and the game modes and maps are really creative, but what is the game actually like? Specifically, what is the game like now? in the current year of whatever year you're currently watching this video in, so I don't break your immersion. Well, I wanted to find out for myself. So I installed the terrible, shitty, horrible EA launcher and bought the game as a business expense. You see this IRS? It's, it's a business expense, okay? Stop turning up at my house. Welcome, Matt. Who the hell's Matt? All right, let's play some Team Vanquish. That'll, that'll be good. All right, Team Zombies, I'm ready. Let's go. Oh. Holy shit! Listen, Dan, I'm happy you came. I'm happy you're here, but... I am going to destroy you. There you are. Come on, Dan. Oh, you're healing, are you? You're healing, are you? Get destroyed! Alright, just gotta do that... 50 more times, then... I'll win. He didn't expect the flank. Mustard gas! Listen, Dan, I'm sorry, but you're never going to make it in the esports scene with moves like that. Unlucky, mate. Oh my god, we got people. We got people! Oh, shit. That guy's cheating. Oh, wait, never mind. Oh, get out of here! Get out of here! You can't leap at me like that! Sir, a second tactical cue has hit Crazy Dave. This actually might be harder than being at war. Right, fine. Listen, I've got a cool hat. Ah! This really got me thinking about how, like, difficult it must have been for the soldiers in World War II. Like, you're just sitting in trenches for days, for, like, months. And, like, well, if someone throws, like, a chili bean bomb, then you just, like, you're fucked. Jesus Christ! If this guy kills me, this game sucks. This game sucks. After playing Garden Warfare in its current state, I can safely say it is just as fun as it was 10 years ago. And I've even come to appreciate a lot of stuff that I didn't take notice of before. For example, there are very few invisible barriers in this game, which means that in both PvE and PvP, you can basically go wherever you want. Obviously, you can't just like leave the map, but every building, mountain, hillside, anywhere where you think would be a good spot to be in, isn't blocked off. Also, you can do this. I also really love how this game looks. As someone who isn't too fond of overly realistic games, I really love how everything in this game looks 
cheap. And I'm not saying that the models or textures in this game were actually cheap. I mean that the maps in this game look like they were purposefully made to look like somewhere you'd find yourself in once and absolutely hate it. Like, this looks like the sort of place where there'd be a stand selling Huggy Wuggy and Among Us plushies, right? That's not just me. And overall, this game is just plain fun when you actually find people playing. The only thing holding this game back currently is that you can only really find people playing gardens and graveyards and sometimes garden ops. Not one time was I able to find a match of Team Vanquish that had more than one person in it and no matches of Suburbanation or Gnome Bomb. However, I'll let him off of that one because it's Gnome Bomb. But in the instances where I found a full lobby of people playing, I had the most fun I've had playing a shooter game in years. It's just something about how casual this game is that makes it so fun. Obviously, I did run into the occasional good player, but because of how random the encounters are and how, honestly, unbalanced the game can be at times, I never really felt like I was truly useless against anyone. With the rise of esports and people getting unbelievably good at games quicker than ever, in a lot of games, shooters predominantly, if you're not playing just one game constantly, it can sometimes feel like you're always going to be behind everyone. There's no worse feeling than going back to a game you used to love and play all the time, only to be absolutely decimated by zero ping Jacob ten times in a row. And that's nothing against the games or even the players really, but it makes games like this stand out. When a game isn't in the spotlight anymore, I don't feel like I'm going against the world because I'm not. This game feels like it's preserved in its 2014 form. The devs haven't gone back and changed stuff about it. The servers are still up and running most of the time. And I wouldn't be surprised if the few people that are still playing are just like me, trying to revisit something that brought them hours upon hours of joy back when stuff didn't matter. And the biggest thing to worry about was unlocking the Cheeto character. I feel safe in this game. And if you played it years ago and had forgotten about it, maybe you will too. Boss mode fucking sucks though. Thank you for watching until the end. Um, this video took me a very long time to make, so please consider liking and subscribing. If this video reaches 20,000 likes, I'll make a video on Garden Warfare 2. And if I reach 150k subscribers, I'll kill a man.